In this lesson video, I'm going to take the time to explain the process of interacting with the SQLite database for the next few lessons that we will be working with to add some clarity as to what we're going to be doing. Over here to the left hand side I have our activity. Now we've been creating activities in the last few sections, adding all sorts of programming code to interact with our application. The approach I'm going to take is to leave the activities by themselves and be able to interact with another file called the database adapter or DB adapter which will use this DB adapter to interact with the database. And the reason for this model is because we can create multiple activities and the additional activities can all interact with the database going through this DB adapter. So rather than putting all of this code on an activity, we're going to go ahead and separate the connection to the database from the activity itself. Now the DB adapter is going to be in the next lesson. I've already provided the bulk of the code that you would need to be able to connect to the database and you just have to modify that to your needs. In the DB adapter we're going to work with a couple different things. The SQLite Open Helper class, we're going to go ahead and extend that. We're going to actually create a class called Database Helper which will extend this class and that will allow us to create the database when needed and we will only be working with one database for our application but it'll, it will allow us to create that database when it's needed and then anytime we make changes to the structure of the database upgrade that database as well. So that's the purpose of the SQLite Open Helper class. We're going to go ahead and create a, an object based off of that database helper class which extends this one and this object is going to allow us to retrieve the information from the database in either a writable or readable fashion. So we'll have two different methods to use here writable if we actually want to make the changes and readable if we just need to query what the data looks like or read the data itself. I have another class we're going to be working with called the SQLite database and this class is going to allow us to do things like insert the data into the database, delete the data from the database, update any of the data that's in this database as well as query any information from the database. So in order to do the insert, delete, or update I'm going to have to use the writable method up here. Okay, and the last class we're going to be working with is this cursor class. And we're going to create an object called a cursor, which is going to allow us to be able to navigate through the records. And you can see here I currently have two different records. If I want to be able to move between the records of data, I will have to use a cursor. So all of these work together to allow our activity to work with this, which will then, on, in its behalf, work with our database. And you can see the structure of the database illustrated here. I'm going to have a field name called underscore ID and that's the, that's the standard first field for a database here within Android and this is going to be the primary key which is going to contain in our case the task number and this number is going to auto increment every single time we enter a new task in so you can see one two the next one will be three four five and so on and that number will never repeat and the reason for that is because we need to have a way to uniquely identify each record within our database you can see here's the tasks and I've got finish TPS reports and write a computer program. The two different tasks that I have entered in here will come from the edit text we placed on our layout and in the event that we have two tasks that have the exact same text and have the exact same date the ID will be used then to differentiate between which task we're going to be working with. The last field is going to be the date and we're going to automatically grab the time and date of when the task is actually entered into the database so we'll put a little timestamp on there as well so we know exactly when that date was entered. And so in the next lesson we're going to go ahead and begin working with the DB adapter and as I mentioned I've already provided a bulk of the code that you will need to use on any application when you interact with a database. It'll just need to be modified for your specific needs.